to today's reading vlog. I'm nervous for this reading vlog. I'm nervous. I asked over on my Instagram what kind of vlog you would rather see me do and it gave you a choice of three options, all of which I do want to do at some point. But we'll start with this one because this is what you guys decided. As you can probably tell by the title of this video, I'm going to be reading books that I've put off reading, which makes me nervous because I've obviously put them off for a reason. But I also might find some of the books that I absolutely love that I wouldn't have got round to in the near future. So at least this way I get round to them. And who knows, I might find my new favourite book. We'll see. The other two options that I gave you guys were reading books by independent authors and reading the highest rated book on my TBR versus the lowest, which like I said will be coming at some point. But today's vlog is reading books that I've been putting off and if you've watched any of my TBR videos you might know that the books behind me are actually the ones that I've been putting off the most. I have two sections in my room, one of them is my sort of immediate TBR, these are the books that I'm like most excited about, they're the books that in my TBR videos I try to choose from them because they're the ones I'm most looking forward to. But the piles behind me these two are piles that I've actually read already and then half of this pile and this whole pile are books that I haven't read but they're the books that have been on my TBR for the longest time out of all of the books and I don't know why but in my TBR videos I do tend to stay away from these books <laughs> just try and choose something from my more immediate TBR. So for today's video all of the book choices will be from this back pile which scares me, it scares me. I don't know how this is gonna go, but we're gonna see. The first book that I think I want to read this week is It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey. This one I actually saw in the works last autumn and I bought it because I wanted to read it this summer. And at the time it had so much hype, literally so much hype. And this book is actually the reason that I know about Tessa Bailey as an author anyway, because I feel like this is the one where she really blew up on TikTok and stuff. But the reason that I've been putting this book off and the reason that I'm nervous to go into it is because I actually bought one of her Christmas books, which is called Window Shopping. And I bought that one because I really wanted to read one of Tessa Bailey's books because this one had got so much hype but I knew that I was saving this one for summer and obviously we were in winter. But I really didn't like window shopping. I just didn't get on with it. I really didn't like how she wrote the main guy. And I just found that I was cringing through the whole thing. But I bought this book before I bought window shopping and read that. So I already had this on my TBR and that's why I've been putting it off because I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared that it's gonna be kind of a similar vibe as window shopping. I'm scared to see how she's gonna write the male main character and I don't know whether Tessa Bailey is going to be kind of one of those authors that maybe just isn't for me. I am going to give it a go, I'm going to go in open-minded. I'm hoping that it's going to give me summer vibes because we're still very much in summer and this is, it happened one summer. All I really know about this is that there's Piper who's basically sent away to this little seaside town and meets a grumpy fisherman. That's all I really know about this. So it's kind of giving grumpy sunshine, small town romance. We'll see, we'll see. This also feels really chunky. Let's see how many pages. 385 pages, so not that bad actually, but it feels thicker than that. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm gonna start this one today and we'll see how I get on with it. I'm nervous, why am I nervous? <laughs> I'm nearly halfway through this book. It's actually really really easy to read. Like the writing just flows really well which I'm pleasantly surprised by. There are a few things that are kind of not my favourite. <laughs> I saw a lot of reviews saying that Piper the main girl is basically insufferable <laughs> and I can completely see why people are saying that but I do understand that she's meant to be like that at the start and that's just where her character in her character arc starts. It basically follows Piper and she's a really rich spoil kind of bratty character and she basically gets into some trouble and her stepfather is like right that's it had enough I'm sending you off to this small town and you basically have to learn to fend for yourself and not have everything just handed to you like you have to work out how to live your life by yourself basically. So she goes to this small town with her sister and she meets a grumpy fisherman called Brendan and like I said earlier I was nervous about Brendan as a male character just based on my previous experience with window shopping and how Tessa Bailey wrote that male main character. Brendan is better, a lot better, <laughs> but still some of the things he thinks or says I just feel a bit like mmm doesn't sit right with me sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't feel like it fits, is the best way I can explain it. And also quite a lot of the time, it's very, very much sexualizing her as a person. And I think that's where it's kind of like, 
jarring to read and I just feel like there's a real line between getting across that he's attracted to her because obviously we want them to be attracted to each other if it's a romance but then also having some of the thoughts that he's thinking I'm just kind of like we don't need that <laughs> but I will say it's not bad it's not bad I will say that the start of this is very much giving wild child the movie very much so. I'm literally imagining the actress in that as Piper. <laughs> I have been reading it physically but also listening to the audiobook just while I've been doing other things but I've just been filming and my books are literally, if you can see the piles behind me, they look really small because my books are literally all over my floor at the minute. So I'm gonna put the audiobook on while I tidy it up and stack all my books back up. If you're wondering why I'm literally always restacking them it's because I film a lot of TikToks and use them for YouTube videos and stuff and the piles end up literally every Everywhere, all over my room <laughs> and then at the end when I'm done filming I need to restack them so that's what I'm about to do I'm on chapter 16 at the minute which is page 177 I think there's like 380 pages was it that I said earlier 390 if we count the bonus scene which I didn't even realize was in here I like that it's also set at the start of August because we're at the start of August and that was really nice because when they said you've got until the end of July when we're sending you off to this town I was like because I love it when books are set at the exact same time you're reading it. I just think it's perfect timing. Literally perfect timing. Okay, let's tidy some of these books away. Just make me cringe. by Tessa Bailey and questionable. <laughs> I feel like overall questionable. I just don't think Tessa Bailey's writing is necessarily for me. I don't think the way she writes characters is something that I really connect to. I think Piper was okay. Yeah she was kind of annoying at the start but I feel like that's how she's meant to be and we do kind of get to see her character arc. I didn't really like Brendan as a character. I just didn't like him. <laughs> He was doing okay, which I was kind of happy about because, as I said before, I was kind of sceptical just of how Tessa Bailey was going to write the male character just from my experience from window shopping. He was doing okay to start with, he was doing okay, but then before they'd even got together or before she'd kind of even shown an interest in him, he just had some internal dialogue or some thoughts that were just quite questionable and I just kind of read and was like, oh, okay. And they just felt to me a bit like they read in a sort of disrespectful way. I don't know. It's just not for me. It's just... And the spice scenes scarred me for life. <laughs> no, honestly, I just don't, I just don't think they're for me. I just... I would quite happily have lived my life having never read them. Some of the things that happened were just a bit... Unnecessary. <laughs> I think that's partly to do with the fact that I didn't really like the two characters, like I didn't feel connected to them in, in any way. I, I, I just don't like Brendan. I just don't like him. I don't know why he's grunting all the time. Literally, somebody please tell me why this man 
is grunting all the time. <laughs> Literally every single sentence or anything he said, it was like, he grunted, he grunts. We get it, we get it, we get it. Can you please stop grunting? Because I don't want to read that. I don't want to imagine it. I don't, I don't want it. <laughs> I don't want it. And also you cannot tell me that this man does not smell like fish. <laughs> cannot tell me. He literally spends weeks during crabbing season on that boat fishing essentially and Miss Tessa Bailey cannot persuade me that he's coming back smelling like sea air, smelling like sea salt. No, he smells like fish. <laughs> Do not lie to me. He smells like fish. We know it. We all know it. And that's something that I kept thinking, especially when he'd come back from the bow, I kept thinking, this man is smelling like fish. <laughs> the whole thing between them felt very fast. And I'm not just meaning kind of how they got together. I'm meaning more so when he started to say that he loved her or started to feel that. I felt like that was very kind of rushed and felt very quick. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I literally got whiplash at the end of this book because of how much back and forth there was. I just feel like there was not very much going on and then all of a sudden in the last sort of 60 pages it was like all crammed in and I literally feel like I got whiplash from reading that. And the whole thing just in general felt a bit too predictable for me and a bit cliche and I do think that romances very often are cliche and predictable but I feel like that works if you've got characters that you can really connect to and just for me this one wasn't one of those that I really connect to the characters just wasn't into it and I'm gonna rate it two stars which feels really harsh but what can you do what can you do on to the next that's all for now I'll catch up with you tomorrow when we pick my next book Good morning, it's time to choose our next book. As you saw, I finished It Happened One Summer last night and since then I've literally been trying to work out what kind of a mood I'm in and what kind of book that I want to read and I honestly cannot work it out. I think I want to go for something along the thriller mystery line, give the romance a bit of a break, but I honestly can't work out from the ones behind me which one I want to read. Let's go through some options. Okay, these are the ones that are most kind of drawing my attention at the minute. First we have The Maidens. This is giving Dark Academia. I think this has something to do with Greek mythology as well. But this is the same author as The Silent Patient. I really, really enjoyed The Silent Patient. So that's why I wanted to read this one. But since having bought this, I've read Dark Academia thriller books and they've been okay. They just haven't been my absolute favorite. So that's kind of why I've been putting this one off. And then we have TikTok by Simon Mayo. I really want to get into more sort of sci-fi dystopian books. And this one was kind of giving that vibe, but also at the same time being a thriller. I've never actually heard anything about this one. It looks interesting. And then we have Do No Harm by Jack Jordan. This one is actually on my August TBR, so it would be kind of good to start this one maybe, because then it's one on my TBR as well. Again, I don't really know that much about this one, but I have heard that it's good. And this is an author that I've never read before either. And then we have The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley. I really like Lucy Foley's books, I really like how she tells a mystery, I just find it so interesting. And this one is in Paris, so that's fun. I think out of all of these, probably makes the most sense to go for Do No Harm, because this is also on my monthly TBR. So I think we're gonna do this one. Um... <laughs> I think I'm gonna DNF it. I know, I know. I'm literally three chapters in and it's stressing me out <laughs> and not in a good way. It's just literally sending my anxiety through the roof reading this. It basically follows a surgeon and she's a mum. And the idea of it is that her son has got taken and to get him back, she has to take one of her patient's life. But I think kind of make it look like an accident because she's a surgeon. It just, it's stressing me out. <laughs> that by itself was literally giving me anxiety. But then I started reading, literally in the second chapter, that she was pulling out her own eyelashes and eating them. And I just thought, actually no. <laughs> no thank you, no thank you. And I feel like if I'm feeling this so early on, yes, I do usually give it 100 pages at least, but the fact that this is literally making me stressed out, I just feel like I've got too many books on my TBR to be feeling that way at the start of a book. And maybe if I'm in the mood to read it at a later date, then I will. But for now, I just, I don't want to read it. I don't want to read it. And especially when I have so many on my TBR that I really, really want to read and I'm so excited about, I just think, maybe not. <laughs> Maybe not. So we're gonna DNF this. We're gonna DNF it. I think that's the fastest DNF I've ever 
done. That's how much this book is stressing me out. <laughs> I just think I don't need that in my head because I'm gonna remember that. I'm gonna remember this whole vibe and not necessarily in a good way. Like I just, I don't want it in my head. I don't want it. <laughs> so I'm gonna pick something else, probably out of that pile. I think I might go for the Paris Apartment, which is the Lucy Foley one, just because I haven't read one of her books in a while and I'm kind of nervous that I'm about to go into a book slum. So I'm gonna pick that one up because her writing is usually really fast paced and I do enjoy the way she kind of sets up a story and sets up her characters. So I think I'm gonna give that one a go. I am gonna have a quick look back at the books and the options that we've got. <laughs> it's a no from me. <laughs> halfway, I think just a bit over halfway actually, into The Paris Apartment by Lisa Foley. It's okay <laughs> so far. I don't feel as gripped as I usually like to feel in a thriller but it is interesting and I am kind of thinking what's going on <laughs> so that's good but I feel like I'm not rushing to go back to it and to pick it up. I have been reading it and also listening to an audiobook. I'm really enjoying the audiobook, I'm listening to it on Spotify, but I'm really enjoying the audiobook because they have different voice actors for every single person and they do the different accents and everything, so I think that's really fun to listen to. This basically follows quite a few people and quite a few different perspectives, which all of Lucy Foley's books do that, but this one, compared to her others, feels like there is definitely a main character and then sort of the side characters, whereas the other two books that I've read by her feel very much like there isn't just one main character all of them are part of the story and this one does definitely feel like Jess is our main character that we're following. It basically follows Jess who has gone to Paris to go and find her brother and her brother lives in this big apartment block and her brother knows that she's coming but when she turns up he's not answering any of his calls, he's not answering the door, he's basically nowhere to be found and that's not a spoiler by the way that literally happens in like the first chapter. So she basically finds a way to get into his apartment and she's basically trying to find him and trying to work out where he is and what's happened and it just follows her meeting these other characters and trying to put these pieces together. There is definitely an eerie feeling at times, especially when she's in the apartment by herself and it's at night, but I don't know what it is about it that I'm not absolutely desperate to pick it up. I think it's probably sitting at like a three star right now. So it is good, it's okay. I also don't know what it is about this one in particular, but I'm actually finding it harder than I did with her other two books to remember sort of who's who, <laughs> because there are quite a few characters. But before with the other two books that I read, I didn't find that it was difficult to kind of imagine or pinpoint who those characters were, Whereas in this one, whenever it goes to someone else's point of view, say Sophie or someone, I'm like, who's Sophie? <laughs> I'm like sat there like, which one is that again? Which one is that? So I don't really know why that is. I don't know whether maybe it has something to do with the fact that I'm listening to it on audiobook as well as reading it. But then you'd kind of think with the different accents and everything, maybe that would help it go into my head more. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but I am interested to see what happens and how the rest of this is all revealed and also where is her brother? I wanna know. <laughs> actually really good I really enjoyed the ending the pace of it was a lot quicker but actually getting there and the journey getting there was kind of slow and a bit boring at times and very very cryptic which I know it has to be because we have to set up all these characters and all of them have to have some kind of motive for it not to be really obvious who's actually done it but it was so cryptic to the point that it was borderline annoying <laughs> And every single chapter ended with like some really cryptic sentence and I'd be like, oh, okay. <laughs> and overall, I didn't really feel that invested in it. I think it's because all the characters are quite unlikable in some way. And again, I know that they're kind of meant to be because they're meant to all kind of have a motive so that we really have no idea who's done this thing. And we kind of suspect everybody and I get that that's the point, but I feel like it's difficult to then have that, but also have a story that you're connected to. I think the ending was really interesting though. And I kind of wish that had become more of the plot earlier on because it felt like we'd got all the interesting stuff right at the end in the last 
60 or so pages and I think that there's something about the way that she wrote this one that feels a bit sort of long-winded like it very much felt like we were following every single character with every single thing they were doing and if they were walking to a building for example it would take us every single step to get there which I feel like slowed down the pace a lot and it's something that I didn't really find with her other two which is interesting but I don't know whether that's more to do with the fact that I felt more invested in say the guest list which I think is probably my favourite by her. This was quite similar pace for me as the hunting party was but I do think the ending of this one definitely brought my rating up. I also think parts of this really reminded me of Saltburn the film. I don't know what it was about it. There was just something about the vibe. It had a really weird essence to it, especially about two thirds in. And all I could think was Saltburn. <laughs> That's all I could think. So as for rating, I think I'm gonna rate it three stars. I am gonna sit with that for a bit and just see how I feel in the morning. Just while I've had some time for it to sink in and everything. And the next book that I'm gonna pick up, I'm so nervous for. But it's a book that you guys have been asking me to read for a while, especially those of you that like this series. It's a book that I read the first one in the series of and I'd already bought the second one before I'd read the first one in the series. First one wasn't my favourite thing. It was an okay read. I just really didn't like the main guy character in it. And you guys have told me so much that the second one in the series is so much better. So since I had the book already, I thought I'd give it a go. But you'll probably know that I've been putting it off. I just, I'm not sure on it. <laughs> I'm not sure how I'm gonna feel. I kind of think maybe I'm not gonna like it. I don't know. But it's probably the book on my TBR that I think I've been putting off the most out of all of them. And that's Twisted Games by Anna Flang. This is the second one in the Twisted series and I read Twisted Love probably about a year ago now and I think I rated it like three stars. I'm not sure that if I read it now I would rate it three stars. I think I'd probably rate it lower just because I can't really remember anything about that book other than Alex and how kind of controlling he was and I just felt like he gave me major over possessive vibes which is something that I really didn't like but so many of you have told me that this one is way better. I will say that it does have the age gap trope in which just to start with is not one of my favourite tropes but the characters in here, I remember thinking I'd like to know more about them in the first one, so that does give me a bit of hope. This one follows Bridget, who I believe is a princess, and Reese, who is her bodyguard. So we're gonna see how it goes. I'm gonna give it a good go. I am in a romance mood, but at least I'm in the mood for a book like this. The text feels really small now, but I think that's literally since reading this because the text is so big in this and the chapters are really short which is really nice but I'm gonna give it a go I'm really hoping that I like this one also part of the other reason is I also read If We Ever Meet Again by Anna Huang which is the first one in a different series by her and I read that one after I read Twisted Love and again I just didn't really like the characters in that one but that's what's also making me kind of nervous to go into this one because this will be the third Anna Huang book that I've read and I really hope that I like it and we'll see how it goes Fingers crossed. <laughs> which is a good sign. Also the sort of dynamic between Bridget and Reese, right from the very first meeting is very very clear and I feel like we're very much just thrown into it which is quite nice as well. And his sort of grumpy moody vibe works really well because he's a bodyguard and he's an ex navy seal and everything. I think the grumpiness isn't cliche in this situation because it just fits his character so well and it makes sense and that's when I think that the grumpy part of Grumpy Sunshine works really well. to do a little update on Twisted Games. I started this yesterday and I got 150 pages in, which I feel like is telling you something. <laughs> it's actually kind of good, okay? <laughs> which I can't quite believe I'm saying really, because this is out of all the ones in this vlog, this is the one that I was putting off 
the most because I genuinely thought this was the one that I probably wasn't going to get on with. Now I am only 150 pages in but so far so good. I'm having a good time. I really like Bridget as a character. I liked her in the first book and I also really like Reese, which again things could change but right now I'm loving the whole dynamic they've got going on. I think it works so well. Because when I found out it was kind of grumpy sunshine, I was a bit like, mm, because I feel like that trope can be done in a really cliche way. But in this, it works so well because it really just fits his character. He's not just grumpy for the sake of being grumpy. He's a bodyguard, but he's this ex-Navy SEAL and he's had this trauma from being in the Navy. So him being the way he is, just work so well and I feel like it really fits his character and that's when I like Grumpy Sunshine when it's done like that. I do think that the pace of this one I can't really put my finger on like it's very very quick as in time is passing by like we've already spent two years with these two characters and we're only 150 pages in but I'm like does it work? I think it kind of works <laughs> but I'm wondering why she's kind of done that. I don't know whether it's to seem like it's more a slow burn romance and they actually haven't got together and it's been two years that kind of thing. I don't know I can't put my finger on it whether it's a good thing or not or maybe it's just not a good thing not a bad thing I don't know but I feel like so much has happened in this 150 or so pages like we keep getting little scenes where things kick off or things happen and then it's on to the next on to the next which is kind of nice because it makes it really fast paced and to be fair I do feel like at the same time we are very much getting what they're like as characters and it doesn't feel rushed in that aspect I don't know I'm quite surprised by this so far I will say that there hasn't been any spice scenes yet and I feel like this is where it kind of goes downhill for me <laughs> because I feel like it's so easy in a spice scene to be sort of cringy and my experience with Anna Hung's books and her spy scenes before have just really made me cringe and they just haven't been for me so I'm not gonna lie I am a bit nervous about that <laughs> but we'll have to see so far so good he is definitely my type so I'm here for it and also I did a QA and a a couple of days ago which will already be up on my channel but in that was a question about things that I absolutely love to find in a book and I was talking about like nicknames and cute nicknames but I couldn't remember any of the nicknames that I meant because I don't mean like pet names like babe or darling I mean like names that come from either who they are or something that they've done this is a perfect example of that because he keeps calling her princess and I don't know what it is about that it's just the way he's like you're gonna listen to me princess and I'm like okay okay but that's what I mean by a nickname that comes from in this case who she is because she is a princess and I just love that I love it and every time he calls her that I'm like okay definitely enjoying it a lot more than I did the first one but again we do have quite a way to go I'd say we have two thirds to go and I feel like a lot can change in that time so I'm feeling good. I'm having a great time. It's very, very readable. I've always thought that Anna Huang's actual writing is very readable and very fast paced and enjoyable to read. It's just her characters that I don't necessarily get on with. But so far, so good with this one. We'll see. don't think I would ever recover if somebody drew a picture of me. I just... This man! That's so cute. That is so cute. I can't deal. I can't deal. Also another thing he did really early on, I was like, <laughs> it got me, it got me. And if anybody did that for me, I would literally, I genuinely don't think I would be able to recover. It was the scene where she was meant to go to the concert with her friends. I really like him. <laughs> I really like him.
finished Twisted Games and mixed opinions, mixed feelings about it. I feel like it didn't need to be this long and I think that's probably why it kind of dragged towards the end for me. I was just kind of ready for it to be over and I feel like it was losing my interest the more it was going on. <laughs> Which I know sounds really bad, but I honestly think this could have been like 100 pages shorter than it was. But I'm not going to lie, I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it. I really like the dynamic of the bodyguard and the princess. I think the grumpy sunshine in this really, really worked. And it wasn't done in a cliche way, which I feel like is really hard to do with that sort of trope. But I did really like Reese as a character. And that was actually a pleasant surprise because of my experience with how she's written men in her other books. I will say that there were times when I was kind of like, oh no <laughs> just with certain things he said just kind of felt a bit degrading at times and that's not really my vibe but it wasn't so much that i couldn't just overlook those scenes or when he said things like that but other than that i really like reese's character and i like them two together there is something that i just want to talk about really quick and this is going to be a bit of a spoiler so i'm going to put as always the timestamp here just so that you can skip it if you do want to read this book and you don't want any spoilers this is your warning skip it skip it skip it <laughs> but i got so confused i got so confused and i think this is kind of a universal experience because i was literally on tiktok trying to watch videos of people trying to explain this book to me the family situation i have never been more confused in my life i'm literally reading it thinking are they cousins? Are they cousins? And that really threw me off. And I feel like that's all I could think about until I literally worked it out. I literally had to draw out, I sat down and I drew out the family trait. <laughs> because I honestly couldn't make sense of it. I couldn't make sense of it. And I was just so confused. I was so confused, but I've literally drawn it out. I think this is right, but I feel like we also don't have enough detail. So for example, I don't know whether the king which is Bridget's grandfather. Is that the grandfather on her mum's side or her dad's side? I don't think that was ever said. And if it was, then I missed it. But I did try and work it out the best that I could. <laughs> but the fact that I literally have to sit down and do this to work out what on earth is going on, I feel like just says how confused I was. And I do think that Anna Huang could have probably explained it a bit better than she did because then she was also throwing in that Andreas also wasn't her, Bridget's actual cousin. And I'm like, how, how is this working? I think I did work it out, but it was confusing. It was confusing for a while. And I feel like that was kind of where I was more confused than I was kind of enjoying the story. I did like those sort of plot twists and stuff, but it just kind of lost me. I honestly felt like I spent so long trying to work that out. And I feel like the way it was written kind of made it more confusing. Like there was a conversation with Andreas and Reese, and Andreas was saying, my father, my real father, although he's not biological. And I'm like, I know what he's trying to say because he's trying to say I count him as my real dad because he's the man that raised me even though he's not biologically related to me I count him as my real dad like that is my dad that's what he's trying to say but the way that it was written just the use of the words of my real father but not my biological one I'm like what is going on who are you talking about sir <laughs> who are you talking about <laughs> but I did manage to work out it does work without them being related which is always nice to know <laughs> so it's always good but that did really throw me for a loop when I found that out because I was literally like watching TikTok videos of people trying to explain it. And I honestly feel like everybody thought they were cousins when they first read it. I think that's just a universal experience with this book. But overall, I did enjoy it. I was having a really good time, especially at the start, just when we were first kind of getting their dynamic and them two together. And I do really like how that was done. And I like the sort of slow burn vibe that we had going on at the start of this but it wasn't one that i was absolutely desperate to get back to it was one that i was just kind of enjoying when i was in that world but i didn't really think about it when i put the book down like i said i wasn't absolutely reaching to get back into the story but it is a good time it's a fun time i think i probably will leave the rest of the series for now i think i just struggle to kind of connect with these characters and that just kind of makes it like a fun book 
but not much more than that for me and my experience reading it. So for now, I think I would probably leave the rest of the series. I'm not desperate to go and pick up the next one, but who knows, maybe there will come a day when I'm in the mood to read the next one and then I will. I know one of them is about Christian Harper, who is mentioned in this one. That was kind of interesting to kind of see how he came into it, but I'm not desperate to go and pick up the next one. I think I probably would rate this a three stars. I'm kind of mixed feelings about that. It could go down to 2.5, but I think, I think probably a three right now because I did really like their kind of chemistry and their dynamic that they had going on. And it was literally just up until the end that I felt like it kind of dragged a bit, but that was just my experience with it. So I think I'm probably gonna settle for a three stars. Three stars, yeah. And just before I end this vlog, I also did want to say that Paris Apartment, I actually moved down to 2.5. But on Goodreads, I'm going to put it as a 3, I think. It's probably more of a 2.5. I just wanted to mention that because I know I said earlier on that I was kind of going to sit with it for a bit and see if that changes. And it has kind of changed because I think 2.5. I don't know. I don't know. Why is rating books so difficult? I feel like I'm too indecisive for this. <laughs> but that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you've enjoyed coming along with me and reading books that I've been putting off. <laughs> I think if this has taught me anything, it's that... I'm putting books off for a reason. I feel like I have kind of a good gut instinct when it comes to the books that I think that I'm gonna like or not, which isn't always the case, but I feel like this video, it has very much been the case for this video and the books in this video. So that's been interesting, but I am really glad that I've got some of these books ticked off my TBR because they're, they honestly have been there for so long and it's been really interesting just to see what they're like finally, because I feel like all the books that I picked up do have a lot of hype around them and it is nice to know kind of what I think about these really hyped books as well. So it's been fun and I hope that you've enjoyed watching. Please let me know if you did and I will hopefully see you in my next video.